This is The Right Approach. I am J.W. Judge, and with me is my co-host, Barbara Hinsky. This is a podcast for writers to learn more about the craft and business of writing as we explore a new topic every week. Our guest today is Yasmin Ongo. She is an Anthony-nominated author of the critically acclaimed series Nina, or the critically acclaimed Nina Knight series. Um, she has also presented at the Grand Canyon Writers Sisters in Crime chapter, which is how Barb got to know her and how we got connected here for this podcast. So Yasmin, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Yo, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. So I wanted to start with something you've spoken about before, mm -hmm. uh, and that is the topic of perseverance. And I think that it's probably something that is not talked about enough, particularly as it pertains to writers and both the business side and the craft side of writing and so maybe talk about it both in however you want uh, but as it pertains to you and why it's a topic that was important for you to write about or to speak about um, and how it affects writers more generally sure um, and I can definitely talk about it um, pers persevering before I you know um, got my um, contracts or my deals or whatever. And then now as I'm in it and in the business of writing, because it's two different kinds of perseverance and it's, you know, and it's very recent as I just turned in uh, a revision like two days ago. And so I'm like, but um, so it's fresh. It's very fresh. <laughs> and the wound is fresh, you know? And so I'm like, I got things to talk about. Okay. No. Um, but in regards to uh, persevering, um, before you get an agent, before you, um, you know, get a book deal or, or self-publish, however it is that you're going to do it. Um, it really took me a while. Like it wasn't something short and like overnight. It was 20 years of, you know, toiling around uh, of um, detours. I was teaching during that time and, and a military spouse and, you know, had kids and things like that. So it was detours from when I was young and I was like, oh, I want to be a writer. Um, and then I didn't know how to be a writer back in the day before we had like, you know, social media where it's a little bit easier to find that information. And um, you had to like snail mail all of your queries and stuff like that, if y'all remember, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, so um, so like it's been some time, right? And, and putting the books down or the stories down, life happens and then picking it back up and trying to get yourself into it. And despite all of those detours, the kids, the, the uh, you know, the moving around and, and deployments and stuff like that, like uh, writing was my safe space. What I realized mm -hmm. after 20 years of detour was, you know, I have to get back to that thing that makes me happy, which is uh, writing. And so I have to persevere through, you know, being tired because, you know, I've been in the classroom all day and dealing with 150 students. Um or, and then coming home and having to deal with my own kids and, and stuff like that. So it's really getting through that and persevering through when you finally decide to go ahead and take the plunge and, and query. So you're putting your work out there and it's so hard to put your work out there when you had it and it's just been you and you think it's okay, you know, and you give it to someone, it's very intimate and it's very like revealing because they it is a story that's probably not about you, but it is about you because it is your inner workings, right, of your mind. So it is very much like a part of your soul that you're giving to someone and entrusting in them to see if they want to represent it or if you have query partners or, I'm sorry, critical partners to see if, you know, what they think about it. Um, and so hearing the things that you might not want to hear that you might not have thought about, it's hard or hearing rejection because that person didn't connect to, you know, what you wrote or they don't quite understand what it is that you were trying to say. Those things are hard. Um, and so what I had to realize um, in getting all of those rejections and, you know, um, Her Name is Night is not the first uh, book that I wrote. The first one that I wrote was a women's fiction or contemporary fiction. And that didn't, you know, get any, like, you know, people liked it, but not enough. You know what I'm saying? And and so those that also hurts is when everyone says, oh, I love it. I love your voice and I love the characters, but it's not enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you're just like, but why? You know, why isn't it? And I can make it enough and I don't understand. And all of those things make you want to just like, uh, just wither and die, 
You know what I mean? And I had moments where I, you know, I just stopped and, you know, just didn't touch it for a minute or whatever. But like, I realized that if I want this, if I really truly want it, I can never stop. Um, and that's what kept me going through all of those rejections and um, through all of those um, moments when I'm super tired or when I feel like I, I don't have any creative, you know, ability in my head or when I doubt my my work. Um, even now with three books in and one book coming later on this year, I still doubt my work. And I'm like, is, am I a fluke? Are they going to like be like, actually, you know, we came to our senses and we don't like it. You know what I mean? And, and take back everything that they have. I still have that, you know, um, but thinking about that. And I still have to go through after being published after all these books, and I think I know what I'm doing. I still struggle when I get um, those, uh, revisions those comments back from my editors um and they have gone through every single page and I have hundreds of comments and yeah. it's hard to go and read every single comment that someone says and how you have to think about how to address it how to fix it and and all of these things and sometimes they might put their personal opinion in it and it feels a little judgy and it feels a little snarky and it hurts you know it's like just everything coming at you and how do you just not like say you know screw it I almost cursed I'm trying not to and like <laughs> throw it away and never come back to it again because I don't have to take this you know and and so going through that but then I remember how much I love getting you know the email the responses back from readers that they really connected with a character that they really love the story, that they can see it on, you know, the big screen because that's how I see it when I'm writing it and stuff like that. Those are the things that make me remember why I like to do these things. And even like when my kids, you know, think I'm cool for a little bit because usually they don't. And they're like, wow, mom, you know, you're kind of, you know, I told my my classmates about you and, and they're like interested and they're surprised that they're interested. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> And, you know, um, and stuff like that. So like that kind of stuff um, helps me. And then I just remember all those years when I wasn't and when I was always thinking of what I want to do and wasn't able to do it. And now that I am, I just, you know, I can't stop. So that's what keeps me going. Can I, can I ask, jump in and ask, you mentioned about all the editorial comments. <sighs> and I always feel if an editor is confused about something, even if I think it's clear on the page, even if they've read it quickly. And so I think, well, somebody else will be confused. I'll fix it. But once in a while, you're like, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. you know? So do you ever push back on something from an editorial comment? Yeah, so that's a great question because in this last round, I did a little bit because I didn't understand. And I just say, well, I don't understand what you're saying. So then I need them to clarify where they're coming from so that I can really mm -hmm. see if what they're saying has validity or not. And, you know, they're, they are, they're experts and stuff like that. And I also do, you know, freelance editing on the side. So I know like both sides and I totally understand saying, I don't understand something, um, and, you know, having a discussion with the, the writer to see where, you know, I might have messed up or or them. I actually go through it a couple of times myself to make sure that, you know, I yeah, they read it quickly. Right. I don't read it as quickly, but I, I read it again and I'm like, do I understand it for real? And then I try to give right then and there my explanation for what maybe I don't understand. So it kind of helps the reader, um, the writer a little bit. But yes, I do. Um. And I do it very nicely and I just kind of pose it as a question because I need to understand so that I can be very open to, you know, what it is that you might be trying to say, or sometimes, you know, people will write comments and they haven't like read the whole thing. So it might be somewhere else. Right. And, right. and, you know, you get really annoyed. You're like, you know what? It's later on in the story. Maybe like read the thing and then write. And that's what I try to do is like read the thing and then kind of come back so that you're not getting all of that, um, all of those, you know, comments. Right. But, um, but yeah, like, I, so if that's the thing is if, if they're saying, oh, where is this thing? Are they saying that this thing, they think that this thing should have happened by now, even though it's later on. And so those are like, I, I need those clarifying questions and that's, so those are my pushbacks, but they don't come 
often because right. the editors that, especially the ones for um, for these books are, are really good and, and they're really, um, we have great communication um, about their their confusions ahead of time um, and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, that's how it goes with me. Excellent. Yeah. You mentioned teaching. Um, do you share with your students your writing? Do they know this side of you? So I'm not in teaching anymore. Uh, okay. I, I didn't. I you know I taught and then I worked um, at the state level um, of our um, Department of Ed and then I started doing this. So like they're all like grown and and graduate. That makes me feel really really old. Um, but like that's where that's where they are now. So yeah. <laughs> it's hey. Uh, I taught high school for six years out of college mm -hmm. and many of those kids have children who are, you know, older than mine. And mm. that's kind of a weird experience. So <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I have colleagues that I worked with and, you know, like, they'll be like, oh my gosh, like I can't, they, you know, cause I have my maiden name and, and they're like, oh, um, is this like Miss Hunt from, you know, such and such. And I'm like, it is. And so like, they're a little surprised because, you know, I never talked about it. I mean, I was the English teacher, obviously, but like, you know, we never, I never like discussed this is, you know, I'm, I'm writing about killing people, <laughs> you know, you know, or whatever the case is. And so they're pleasantly surprised and, and proud. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to, to hear back from them after the fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I enjoy about that is, you know, and this is true, you know, I guess also for your own kids is mm -hmm. they are seeing someone who is going after something that they have wanted yes. for so long yes. and accomplishing it. Yes. And it makes it so much more tangible for them to know that this mm -hmm. isn't just some thing that we say that, you know, go after these things and you can do it like they're seeing it. And mm -hmm. I just think that that is such an important component of this perseverance is what we're talking about, but what's been a decades long journey mm -hmm. for you and for, you know, other people that now, now other people who are coming along behind you can see, Hey, there is no such thing as overnight success. All of right. it is decades in the making. And right. you mm -hmm. are an example to them of put in the work for, you know, years and yeah yeah I could I can, could actually um like what's funny is that's like a double-edged sword because while the kids my kids think it's cool they also don't think it's cool because then they can't bs me about I can't do something you know um or both of them are very creative one is you know an illustrator that's they're in grad school for that and the other one um is in you know college to be um a lawyer and they're when they even start to be like you know it, you know I can't or whatever or they don't want to do their work or they come with a lower grade than expected I'm like did you not see me like for hours like toiling away at this thing you can't you know that you, they know my journey right um they've seen it from a different perspective but now they've seen the end result and so they can never tell me I can't do something or even now when I'm writing seven days a week not that they need to do that but like if they're like, you know, I, they're sleeping in and I'm like, it's tough, especially when they come on vacation. I'm like, it's five o'clock in the morning. You should be awake doing it. No. And they're <laughs> like, well, mom, you know, and I'm like, but I'm already behind the desk. I'm not behind the desk at five in the morning. But like, so it's a double edged sword. But I also, even though I write adult, going back to my colleagues, I'll go and, you know, I, I say, I don't, I'm not going to push my book, you know, because I can't be, it can't be read in your school, but I can talk to you about the process. And I can talk to you about sticking to the thing, that, finding the thing that you love and how to stick to it and how to like really, yeah, persevere when you have all those self-doubts when other people, because my family, my parent, my mother, you know, she's, she's Ghanaian. So they don't under they don't know this creative thing. You know, they know lawyers, doctors, accountants, those tangible things. But when you're a writer, what is that? You don't get paid every two weeks. Are they, you know, um, are they scamming you? My mom still asks me that. Make sure <laughs> you don't give them any money is what she tells me. And, um, and so 
I, if I'm able to go and talk to kids about the writing process, the craft of it, um, or even like really sticking to the thing that you love, no matter how long it takes you and you don't have to be 18 out of the box and have your stuff together and things like that. Um, those are the things that like really are important to me and matter. All right. And so go ahead, Barb. I was just going to ask, so how do you handle Perseverance's cousin, close cousin, overwhelm. Mm, not I, well. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hate overwhelm, and everyone feels it. Anyone who is persevering eventually thinks there's a tsunami ahead of me. What am I doing? Yeah, I mean, how do you handle that? Yeah, after I curl up on the floor and cry. Um, which I do quite often. And I think you have to give yourself grace and allow yourself to do that. Um, you don't have to force yourself to keep going um, if at that moment you just can't because you have to take a break and you have to reassess and you have to you know, catch a breath. And so I say, you know, and I have done it, I do it all the time is to catch a breath and kind of filter through what is the most important thing that I need to do right now and remind myself why I'm doing it. You said you wanted to do this thing, so you have to be all in. And that's a, another thing that I tell my kids and whomever is if you say you're going to do something and you really mean it, then you need to be all in and do it. And there are no excuses. And I don't even give ex myself excuses. Like I know I'm a procrastinator and I'll wait until the last minute to, to work on something. And then I'm, you know, doing those college sessions of cram sessions and writing all night long. And I might complain and cry about it, but I also say to the people, but I know that I deserve this because I waited, you know what I mean? So you have to be honest with yourself and don't, you know, don't tell yourself things that are not true mm -hmm. about how you really are. And, and you do things, you tackle it. You can't do everything all at once. So you tackle it, you know, little bit by bit. If you want to try for the hardest or maybe go with the easiest and work your way up, you know, that's what I do. Um, and that kind of helps me a little bit. You know, that the overwhelm thing is interesting because our own minds are our worst enemies and we are terrorists yeah and yeah. i sometimes my mind doesn't talk to me with very nice language or a very nice tone mm -hmm. so i have to kind of just shut up my mind one of my other rules of thumb is when you're feeling overwhelmed and tired never think about anything if it's dark outside that mm -hmm. you are not capable of making a solid decision about any major life thing if it's it, you need to be do it in daylight hours yeah that and preferably with a good night's sleep under your belt we mm -hmm. are all human and so as everyone is throwing their shoulder to the wheel like we all do every day um just give yourself a little grace yeah absolutely yeah. so i think something you touched on a second ago yasmin is knowing your purpose and knowing why you're doing it because you can only persevere so long if you don't know the reason that you're doing it um and for me it took it took a long time to come around to that because i wrote creatively when i was in my teens and 20s and then it mm -hmm. dropped off when i started working and going to law school and becoming a lawyer and so there was this gap and it took me a long time before I came around to it. And then it was very intentional. And I did some self-study and, you know, figuring things out for myself of why creativity was not just important, but essential for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to ask you, and sometimes this can be really hard to articulate an answer for is what is it about writing that was so fundamentally important for you that mm -hmm. even, even in the years through, you know, the deployments and young children and family, um, that it was a mainstay. It was something that you were, even if you weren't actively doing it, it sounds like you were thinking about it. Um, and it sounds like something that's been with you and a part of you for a long time. And so if you're able to articulate, you know, what's so fundamentally important about writing that you stuck with it? Yeah. So what's, I go back to when I was 
young. So when I started writing, it was like an elementary school. And my mom, I had mentioned, she, you know, um, came here from Ghana um, to go to school and things like that. So she uh, had to work a lot, multiple jobs. And I was with babysitters or by myself or what we used to call a latchkey kid. Do they mm -hmm. call them that anymore? Um, and the only thing that got me through were books, were being in totally other different worlds and enjoying that life when my life wasn't as fun, when my life, you know, I was missing my mom or it wasn't time for me to go to my dad. Um, and this was before I had brother and sisters and stuff like that, right? And the feeling that I got um, from that little bit of escapism um, was what stays with me to this day. Um, and I wanna be able to create work like that, creative work like that, um, that makes someone else just take some time away from their life to escape into the worlds that I create and to have that feeling and sense of, you know, just not having to be yourself and you could be this character um, and be going through all the things that they're going through uh, because we need that sometime. And so that's really what, you know, this, that's what pushes me is that I want to make these, you know, stories that make, other people feel the way I felt when I was reading. Um, and that's why I write. Um, and then I also write because I know that writing is the best way for me to get out however I'm feeling. I don't like, I don't journal. I've tried diaries. That's not what I want to do is write about my real life that I've already lived. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to write about fake stuff. You know what I mean? I want to write about maybe the things that I'm going through, but in a different spin where it's not me. You know what I'm saying? So, so those are the things that kept me sane, honestly, is to write about, you know, fake stuff and not have to be a, it's a different way of not of, of escapism for me. Um, So those are the two things that, you know, keep me, those that, that are what we were talking about purposeful. Those are the two, I guess, purposes that I have, you know, for writing. I know that one thing that's been true for me along this vein is, so I have young kids, they're five and nine now. And so when I wrote, I guess, really my first four novels, mm -hmm. one of the themes that I found in those was, and, and it wasn't intentional, but, you know, I'd listened to an interview with uh, Michael Brent Collings, who's a horror writer, and he talks about writing the things that scare you. Mm -hmm. And when you have young kids, there are lots of things to be scary about. Um, and so, so in my, through my first four novels, so much of it was what would a parent, like what links would a parent go for their child, for their family? Um, and all these terrible things happen. And, you know, parents working through these things and it wasn't, I mean, they're fantasy novels. They're, so they're not focused on, you know, like family stuff. It is weird stuff that's happening, but there's those fam familial relationships there. And I think a lot of that was me addressing some of these things head on that probably are never going to happen, but you know, what links am I willing to go to? And I'm going to put my parents or my, you know, the parents in these novels through the ringer um, to deal with these things and cope with these terrible situations. And in some ways it was kind of like, okay, I can put this out of my mind now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, that's not really a fundamental reason for writing, but it's one of those things that as I have developed, like there are things in my life that are going alongside thematically with the writing that I'm doing at those particular junctions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and I've done the same things, you know, you write fantasy and I write about an assassin and I know nothing about that. Um, and if I did, I guess I couldn't tell you. But um, <laughs> But like, you know, the things that she's going through are definitely the things, you know, that I have thematically wise, like gone through finding, you know, the, the difference between the family that you're born into and, and found family and, you know, revenge, like, you know, what is it about like revenge? Is it a good thing or, or bad? So the gray areas, all of that stuff. So yeah, like what, what you've said, I think those are great ways of, of really writing through your feelings and your life without actually writing your life because like I said you're already living it why do we want to read again what you you know what I'm saying but um I guess that goes in a memoir but yeah so totally agree with that 
And for me, it wasn't even conscious at the time. It was something that looking back on it, I was like, oh, I see what's happening here. Yeah, um, yeah. But, it, but it wasn't a decision I was making in the moment or, you know, at least not that I was aware of that I was making. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and writing things that bring you comfort is an interesting theme. I did, I wrote a novella in January of 2021. And if you cast your mind back, you know that the world was a hard place in January of 2021. And watching the news, you know, I was home all day, CNN on all day was, was probably not good for my mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so I just tucked myself away and wrote a little novella called Paws and Pastries, like Dog Paws and Pastries. Happy, cute little book. I'll be damned. That landed me on the USA Today bestseller list. Wow. So hello. Yeah. Um, and it was just a little bit of, you know, self comforting. So I, I went imaginally to this little happy little, I mean, everything wasn't there, were, you know, problems to overcome, but um, generally with a very supportive community around the main character and, you know, finding a, a stray dog and, you know, so how could you miss with that? Mm. But um yeah, I think that's a very solid way to comfort yourself. And I agree with you about journaling and diaries. I can't do that. I mean, yeah, I've already I've already had Tuesday. Wasn't such a great day. I'm not writing it down. Thank you. Moving on. Exactly. And you know, we're we're creatives and writers. So we probably think a lot anyway. And so whatever it is that has happened in our life, we've already, we've thought about it over and over and over yes. again. And there's no need in writing it, you know, because we've already thought it to death already. So yeah, <laughs> for sure. But this is a great place to bring our conversation to an end. But before we do, uh, Yasmin, please tell folks where to find your books. We can see them behind you. Um, and if folks want to buy them, and I'm trying to dunk my mic over here, um, please tell them where to, find it. And if you hang out anywhere on social media, uh, let us know that too. Sure. Um, so you can find it pretty much anywhere uh, books are sold um, and, you know, um, and Amazon as well. And, you know, you go there, but, you know, your indie store will will definitely have it. If they don't have it in store, they'll order it for you. Um, and then you can find me on um, sometimes I'm on, um, I guess they call it X now, but I still like Twitter. But um, I'm, I'm on there. Um, you know, and I have my website, yasminango.com, that you can go through there and see where I'll be and send me a message if you want. Nice one, not not nasty. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nice um, ones only. Yes. Um, I'm on IG, uh, which is author underscore Yaz. So you can, you know, check me out there. And when I, you know, come out of revision, then I typically will post something and um, and stuff like that. So you can you can find me around. I'm around. You're, You're around. Right. Well, yeah, thank I you do. so much for your time. I think it was really encouraging and uplifting, and I just really appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was fun. You. Your covers are great. Your books are great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.